of what the Great Commission is in our life. It's the explanation of what the Great Commission is in our life. Amen. We were commissioned to go ye therefore and make disciples of all people. Uh, that's our job is to go and make disciples. Now, if we don't go and make disciples, we are not accomplishing anything for the kingdom. Amen. All of the other things that we get along the way, those are things that we benefit from. Those are things that we bring to the church, that we bring to the world. Uh, if uh, Let's say, for instance, uh, if we... Amen. Pause <laughs> uh, one more moment. We're having more technical difficulty. We apologize. Amen. Let's say, for instance, that uh, we are feeding the hungry. Feeding the hungry is a good thing, yes? Yes. Yes. Feeding the hungry is a good thing. If you feed hungry people uh, and they die, where do they go? If you, feed them. if you just fed them and then they die, where do they go after that? They they go to, if they're not saved, then where do they go? They go to hell. I, absolutely, they go to hell, right? Uh, if, if you feed hungry people uh, and, and they get saved and then they die, then what happens? And so, if, if you leave out the salvation part of what you did, you made them happy on earth, but you didn't fix their eternity. That's right. You made them happy on earth, but you didn't fix their eternity. Sometimes what we're doing is we're doing the things that make people happy on earth, but we don't fix their eternity. We sing real good. We have nice, entertaining services and worship experience. Mm -hmm. And people come and they enjoy our music. And they shout and they dance. Mm -hmm. And they fall out on the floor. Mm -hmm. And all that stuff like that. And then they die. Mm -hmm. And then they go to hell. Because we have not done what's necessary to get them saved. Mm -hmm. To get them to Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, we have support groups. And, and what are some of the other things we do in the church? Give them to me. What are the good things we do? We do good things. Yeah. Tell me some of the good things we do. We, we have shelters, homeless shelters, right? Uh, we feed the hungry. What else? We provide residence. Get get uh, provide residence for like homeless people or something like that, or, or people that are in need. That's a good thing. If you give them a house and a place to stay, and then they die, okay, that's it, right? That doesn't help. Come on, what what else? prison ministry. Yeah. We go and we visit them in the prison right. and we encourage them and we write them nice letters and, and we and we do all of that <laughs> but if they don't get saved then we, we miss, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, what else? What else do we do? We pay their bills. We help them with uh, utility assistance and stuff like that. What else? Anything else? Get her a chair, please. Uh, hospital. We visit people in the hospital. We do all of those things like that. And, and we visit them and we encourage them. But when they finish, uh, and, and all of these things are good things. They're good things and they're things that we should do. They're things that we're actually supposed to do. But what we missed was the main thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we missed the main thing. If you go to McDonald's and you're hungry, and you go to McDonald's and you go through the drive through and you order, whatever it is that you order, and you come around to the window, and they smile, and they say thank you, and they give you exact change, and they give you your bag, and it's got napkins in it. Mm -hmm. They gave you a bag with napkins, mm -hmm. but no food. <laughs> mm. They gave you excellent service, mm -hmm. but no food. 
You see what I'm saying? And so, and so what happens is you go home saying, wow, they were so kind and polite. Mm -hmm. And I, I've never had such a great experience at a McDonald's as I did today. And you open up the bag and mm -hmm. find that there's only napkins in there. Mm -hmm. right. No food. That now you totally upset, and 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 not only are you going to hell, but you telling them. <laughs> you telling <laughs> Doug Jesus See, I, because, because you missed the main thing. Now 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 here here's what here's what we got to be so careful of. If you examine us, and and if I'm offending anybody, then that's good. I'm doing a good job. Uh, and, uh, we have to, this is advanced communication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to make sure that we're doing the main thing. Amen, amen. If we're doing everything else and giving them napkins and we're not getting the main thing in the bag, which is salvation, then we're missing it. Amen. Let me, let me go to your, your businesses, your profession. Uh, regardless to what your profession is, your profession has a sale point. Mm -hmm. There's something that your profession does to make money. Mm -hmm. there's, there's something that your profession expects to have happen. There's a product. Mm -hmm. And that main product has to be produced and distributed. And if that doesn't happen, then the job is not fulfilling its function. If you sell shoes, and you're very nice and you're polite, and at the end of the day you don't sell shoes, then, then the company's going out of business. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how good your service is. Right. Okay, that's good. If you're, if you're a restaurant and you don't sell food, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you don't actually sell the product, then you actually, if, 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 you, if you go to a hairdresser, and, and they sit and they talk to you and listen to all of your problems, but never <laughs> actually do your hair. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're not actually making the product. You have a cleaning business. Uh, you, you only get paid for actually cleaning stuff. Mm -hmm. you, you don't get paid for looking at it. Mm -hmm. You don't get paid for estimates. Mm -hmm. You don't get paid for uh, how many times you visit them. Mm -hmm. You don't get paid for presentations. You don't get paid for PowerPoints. You don't get paid for any of those things unless you actually clean something. Yeah. You, you do uh, graphic design and, and uh, writing and, and stuff like that and executive assistant stuff. If you don't actually assist with anything, you don't get paid for that. Mm -hmm. If you don't actually design it, there's nothing actually happening. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, and so you got to get your product sold. The people that went to the McDonald's that went home with napkins would rather have had food and no napkins than to have napkins and no food. You can figure out how to get a napkin or a sleeve or a something to wipe your mouth, but you can't figure out how to make food out of the napkin. In the kingdom, we're giving everybody all the napkins. But we're not giving the food. That's good. And, 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 and so they die and they go to hell. Mm. And at that point, they wish that you would have been mean, <laughs> that you would have never fed them, mm. that you would have let them stay hungry, mm. that they could have been homeless, mm. that you would have been uh, rude, and they got saved. Yeah. 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 That's, that's more important. <laughs> but, but we have gotten distracted. Somebody say distracted. distracted. So what we're going to overcome today is we're going to overcome distractions and discouragement. That's good. Distractions and discouragement. Because you know what needs to be done, but, but these are the two things that keep it from actually happening. You know, you know at the end of the day, this needs to happen, but for some reason it doesn't happen. So that means either you got distracted along the way or you got discouraged along the way so you just didn't do it. Mm -hmm. How many of you have tried to do something for the Lord and, uh, and, and you had a great idea, you had a great plan, you had a great vision, you, you all of that was going on, and then something happened and you were distracted and it just threw you all the way left. Yep. And you say, I, I was really going to get that done, but <laughs> then... The sky was falling, and, and, and I, I just, 
got caught up with the sky falling, and then, you know, you had to clean all that stuff up. And then I had to, by the time I finished that, it was time to pick up the kids, and we just didn't get it done. And then tomorrow happens. And then tomorrow happens, and when tomorrow happens, we have to do it all over again. And then, and then something else comes tomorrow to, to hinder us and so forth, right? And, and all of those distractions are, are really uh, what might be uh, described as the work of the enemy. Mm -hmm. He don't have to spin around. His head don't have to spin. He don't have to spit out the pea soup. He don't have to have a pitchfork. And he don't have to have a tail. He can just keep you distracted. Mm -hmm. He don't have to keep you, un he don't have to make you unsaved. Mm -hmm. He can just make you ineffective yeah. by distraction. Mm -hmm. That is good. Yeah. If, if he knows that, that he can distract you by TV, and, and all I got to do is just get a good program on TV, and I, and I got sure got the game. Mm -hmm. And all I got to do is let CC call Marquise. And I got him out of the game. If that happened, he's out of the game. And Talton, if I can just make her foot hurt, then she's out of the game. See, there, there are so many. If I ask you, you got some things. You got some things that get you off game. If the boy acts silly, then, then he got you all the way off the game. It, it, it doesn't matter what it is. It, it's just, and it's the, it's absolutely the design and plan of the enemy. Mm -hmm. if, if you're looking for something coming, you know, all that stuff like that, don't even worry about that. Don't even worry about that. By the time you get to that, you'd have missed so much. Come on, come on. It's the little bitty distractions that are hindering you every day. Those are the things, if you want to find the devil, that's where he's at. The devil is in those distractions. <laughs> he's, in, he's in your oversleeping. He's in your overeating. He, he's in your he's in your uh, time management. He, he's in all of that. He's in your failing to plan. He, all of those things are, are what keep you. Why would he have to worry about possessing you when you ain't gonna show up? I don't have to possess her and, and do all of that stuff like that. They ain't going to show up for the game. Mm -hmm. Game going to be over before they get there. Think about, think about God's timing. You're taking notes. You want to look at God's timing. Mm -hmm. Think about God's timing. When you read the stories in the Bible, many of the miracle stories that are in the Bible are surrounding a particular time. It's what happened at a certain time, at a certain place. And, and it wasn't what was scheduled. It wasn't what was on your schedule. It wasn't what was on the disciples' schedule. It wasn't what was even, in a lot of cases, on Jesus' schedule. But it's what happened along the way. Give Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. It's, it's what happened along the way. Yes, I'm looking at you. Stop. Is what, you all got Mark chapter 5? Yeah. Oh, oh. Almost. <laughs> Mark chapter 5. Oh, yeah, Brown, they need to get my Bible. She did? <laughs> That's a distraction <laughs> right there, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a repentance. That's a repentance. <laughs> she was a, a distracting right. spirit that made you forget your Bible on the way to Bible study. Way home. Amen. That, that can happen. Distractor. Mark chapter 5 says, uh, beginning at the 35th verse. <laughs> beginning at the 35th verse says, and while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house a certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? That's a, that's a distraction statement. Mm -hmm. thy, thy daughter is dead. Why do you trouble the master any further? Mm -hmm. 
whose daughter? Jairus' daughter. Mm -hmm. What was going on? She was sick and she was about to die and he came and he told Jesus, Jesus, I need you. And he said to Jesus, Jesus, I need you and I need you now. <laughs> My daughter is, is sick. She's a little girl and she's about to die. Can you please come to my house and fix this? And Jesus said, cool. Jesus didn't say, I have an appointment for today to go to Jairus' house. That was not on his schedule. He didn't say, I got to go to town so I can get to Jairus. Right? Mm -hmm. But when Jairus came and said, I need you, he said, cool, I'm on my way. Right. And while he was on the way, there was a woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and she had this issue of blood, and she had spent all she had. You all know the story of the woman mm -hmm. with the issue of blood. And, and she heard that Jesus was going by, and she said to herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. So she began to press in and to get close to Jesus. Right. And when she got close enough to Jesus, she reached out and touched him, and Jesus felt the virtue come out of her, out of his body, and he said, who touched me? Mm -hmm. and, when, and then they had that whole dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. And then now, here's the problem for Jairus. Y'all is interrupting my flow. I recognize this is Jesus and everything, but I'm trying to get him to my house. I'm trying to get him to uh, my daughter. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get my daughter healed, and she's about to die, mm -hmm. and, and you are stopping him with your blood issue. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. the, I don't care if Jesus, Jesus was happy to help the woman with the with issue of blood. Amen. But Jay Iris was like, uh, we in a hurry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you ever in a hurry with God to do something and he seemed to be distracted? You want God to do something for you now? You need God to move and, and in a hurry? And it seemed like God is doing everything else but what you asked him to do? I know y'all don't like to say God is distracted, but you kind of feel like God is distracted. Like Jesus come and come quickly. I said my daughter is sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need you to pray for my daughter, and I'm the ruler of the synagogue. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> and I'm important. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Mm. And I told, I had you first. Mm -hmm. So come take care of my situation first, and then go back and deal with this woman grabbing on you and all of this mm -hmm. stuff like that. We, we have a lot of demands that we make on God that, that does not fit on God's schedule. Yeah, because he's going to do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, the way that he wants to do it, because he's right all the time. All the time. Amen. And we tell him that he don't know what he's doing, he just needs to listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> if he would just listen to us, we would tell him exactly how to make everything perfect mm -hmm. in our world, even though we don't know nothing. Right. So, so, so this woman has been healed with the issue of blood, and it dried up immediately, and and everybody's rejoicing how wonderful it is, except Jairus. And right at the time that this woman is being healed, here comes the servant who says, "Your daughter is dead." Mm -hmm. That's usually the point where some church people start cussing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. This so-and-so <laughs> have been out here with this woman who didn't even ask. That's so true. Mm -hmm. And she has interrupted. If it hadn't been for her and all of these people, we could have gotten there and saved my daughter. Yeah. But now my daughter is dead. These are the things that you people would say. <laughs> all God had to do was, was do what I said people fall all the way out so, with God so will. because God don't answer the prayer like you told him right. yeah. 
You told them what to do, and he don't do what you what you asked him to do. I told you, God, uh, Mary and Martha, if you would have just came when we told you, right. our brother wouldn't have died. Don't y'all judge Mary and Martha, because we do the same thing. I asked God to take care of this, and that's why I don't pray. Because what use is it? What good does it do? I've been praying and didn't nothing happen. And he let it happen just like it was going to happen if I didn't pray. So why even waste all that time praying? Mm -hmm. I know y'all ain't going to shout on that now, but that's what you say. <laughs> that's what comes up. So so, so here's the J. Irish right in that moment. And Jesus is sensitive to what's happening in J. Irish's heart. I'm pointing to his head. But I'm talking about his heart. Because he ain't having a cardiac disease, he's having a mind disease. Mind disease. Yeah. And, and, and what happens when you hear that your daughter is dead is that you abandon faith. Yeah. Wow. What happens, what happens if you're not careful when trauma happens is that we're we're prone to abandon faith. Mm -hmm. Have you ever, I ain't gonna ask y'all to testify. Yes, I am. But, uh, but have you ever had something happen and in that moment you didn't feel like speaking in tongues? Mm -hmm. yep. You see what I'm saying? It, it's like God should have done something. And right now it's, it's what we say snatching me out of the spirit and into the flesh because he allowed this to happen when he could have done something. All that's happened is we've abandoned faith. That's it. Right. Come on. That's all, that's all that's happened. Mary and Martha got an attitude. We still cool. We still friends. But you should have came when we called. Mm -hmm. If you had come when we called, then our brother would still be living. Right. right. So I, I kind of got an attitude with you, but we still friends. Mm -hmm. And that's how we are kind of with God. I, we ain't saying we want to go to hell now. Right. You know, we ain't saying we want, want the devil now. But we just really not happy with God right now because he didn't do what we needed the way we thought we needed him to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Jesus is sensitive to what's happening in our heart. Yes, and yes, and yes. because he's sensitive to that, immediately he reached over and grabbed Jairus and said, look, don't be afraid. That's an interesting, that's the, uh, I think that's 36 verse. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, don't be afraid. Only believe. Now, Pastor Todd taught us something that was very masterful. He said there's, there's 66 books in the Bible. We know that Jesus did three years of ministry. He lived 33 years of life, and that's not counting the generations of people that lived all throughout the Old Testament and, and in the years after Jesus was life, right? So what he said is that the words that are actually in the Bible are there because we need them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if we didn't need them, they wouldn't put that in the Bible. So he tells you things in the Bible to do because if he doesn't tell you, that's not what you're going to do. He, he tells you have faith because if he doesn't tell you, you're not going to have faith. Some of us still not going to have faith, even though he said have faith. He tells you don't kill, because some of us want to kill. And, and, and only if it wasn't for God saying, thou shalt not kill, and we might kill more than we did, even though he said. <laughs> Tell the truth. You see what I'm saying? And, and so these words are significant. We just can't read over them like they're just poetry that's just happening in that moment. These words are significant. In the moment that this man got the word that his daughter is dying, Jesus stops mm -hmm. and says, don't be afraid, mm -hmm. only believe. Thank God. These are his choice words. Don't be afraid, Good. only believe. That tells me, Brother Davis, that if he doesn't tell me that, I'm going to be afraid, and I'm not believing. Because <laughs> Jesus knows my heart. Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. 
So since he knows my heart, he's speaking to my heart. And he's telling my heart, don't be afraid. Because he knows my heart was already stressed. Mm -hmm. And now I'm saying what I'm is going to do. My daughter has died. What am I going to do? At that point, and then the other people, you got to watch your company too. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. You got to watch your company. Because the man came and said, there's no need in bothering the master yeah. anymore. Ain't no need in praying anymore because she's died. Ain't no need in seeking the Lord anymore because it's over. So now, here you got the resurrection with you. But the word that comes says, abandon the master altogether. It looks like you're just mad about this instance. But if you're not careful, abandoning him in this moment will lead to you abandoning him altogether. Mm -hmm. This is just a distraction and it slides over into discouragement. I had all of this hope in God. I was believing God. I was trusting God. I was seeking God. I was praying to God. I was serving God. And in the midst of all of this, I've been doing good. And then God let this happen. And I'm so disappointed in God right now that I don't even want to be bothered with God. Don't invite me to your church. Don't pray for me. Don't call. I don't need no words of encouragement. I'm just through with God altogether because I'm discouraged about my current situation. Now, the end of the story is that Jesus resurrects the girl. And the girl lives happily ever after. Right? That's the end of the story. I'm I'm, spoiler alert. She's resurrected from the dead. But the, but the critical part is not her being resurrected. The critical part is everything that leads up to that. From the woman with the issue of blood to the point that she's resurrected. That's where we could have lost the game. That's where we could have lost the game. Everything from the woman with the issue of blood to the point that she's there and he said, get us something to eat. Mm. For us, many of us, that's where we lose our miracle. We lose our miracle at the point of distraction, at the point of discouragement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, we stop believing. Mm -hmm. We stop believing. And Jesus gives it as a requirement that you believe. Mm-hmm. True. It's not about whether or not he's good. It's about whether or not you believe. That's right. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. that's good. That's good. It, 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 it's not about whether or not he has power. It's literally about your faith. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's true. Every person that he comes in contact with, he asks them, "Do you believe? Mm-hmm. Do yeah. you have faith? Mm-hmm. If you can only believe, all things are possible." Yeah. If you just believe. Yeah. You know, and, and, and then some people, the one man came and he said, I believe, but I need you to help my unbelief. Mm-hmm. He, he recognized where the weakness was, was not in Jesus' ability. It was in his belief. For many of us, the thing that's preventing us from having uh, unlimited success in church, in life, all together, is unbelief. Mm -hmm. You don't even believe that God wants you to be blessed. You don't even believe the things that God wants to do for you. Or else you're distracted. (laughs) If you knew, if you knew the favor Mm -hmm. that you have on your life, if, if you knew the doors that would be open unto you, mm-hmm. if you would only knock, mm-hmm. you, your knuckles would be sore. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> from knocking. You know why you don't knock? Because you don't believe that knocking will get you anything. You don't, you don't drive through the drive through at McDonald's and hope they give you some food. You believe when you get there that they're going to actually give you what you ordered. Or you wouldn't go. Right. Right. So the reason why we're not moving is because deep down inside, in a quiet, dark place that we don't try to let everybody else see, we really don't believe it. And, I, and that's not judgment, that's just fact. Mm -hmm. Come on. We, we really, if you really knew, mm -hmm. now, now some people mm -hmm. are, are the exception. There's, I need to account for the exception. Some people are the exception, and they know God is going to bless, and they're scared of what God is going to do. God is going to do something that, that just more than I can handle. And so I just don't even want to see how God is going to overwhelm me with the blessing. But most of us fall in this other bucket. And we fall in the other bucket that says, don't, don't move. Or, or what's going to happen? What's, what's the bad part that's going to come out of it? Has anybody ever felt like that? Or am I just preaching to myself? Do you, you ever feel like, man, if I go out here again, uh, it's not going to be great. Mm -hmm. That's discouragement. Mm -hmm. How many of you all have a, uh, you have a business or are you doing something uh, in business? Good. So, you know why you don't every day take your business to the next level? Because at a point, you get discouraged by the last number of no's. Thank you for those amen. You all are amazing. I, I really appreciate it. Your, your support. You, you, get, you, you get discouraged uh, by the last number of no's. Uh, you, don't, you don't want to ask nobody again so that somebody else can say no. You're still tired from the last no's. And then when you finally get somebody to say yes, it's like it's like the thing, the defibrillator, you know, boom, you know. Oh, they said yes. Thank you. Thank you. And then and then you go back and get another no and it's like. Now, now, how many of you all can I can I can tell you all that can't see. Nobody else came in here with a McDonald's bag. Mm -mm. Everybody in here passed by a McDonald's. Mm -hmm. But you didn't go there. Mm -hmm. So you hurt their feelings. You hurt their feelings because you said no. Some of you all said no to multiple multiple McDonald's. All the McDonald's. On the way. You, you, you passed by the McDonald's. You didn't even drive through and say, I'm going to come next time. You just rejected McDonald's. You know, and that's why McDonald's is going to quit. Because they've been asking you on commercials all day long. To come by here and get something to eat. And you drove right past them and didn't get nothing. Mm -hmm. See, McDonald's gets it. What's wrong with us? Mm -hmm. Well, I asked three people to come to church tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been calling people for the last three weeks and asking them to come. Mm -hmm. And every time I get ready to come, they make an excuse. <laughs> or they let me down. Or they discourage me. They no different than you passing by McDonald's. Mm -hmm. But McDonald's didn't close because you went by. Right. They said they, they, they had already asked three more people and three more people after that. You know what, what happened? Uh, oh, Lord, I'm going to run out of time. All right, here's what happened. In, in sales, there's a thing called a warm market. I'm going to start charging y'all for this sales training. <laughs> uh, there, there's something called a warm market, and then everybody's heard of cold calls, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. And cold calls means what? It's somebody you don't know, you just randomly got a phone number or email or Facebook, and you just reached out and said, hey, I'm in business. Would you like some? Mm -hmm. That's a cold call, right? A warm market means that you know somebody. I called Tawana, and Tawana introduced me to Pastor Brown. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and because Pastor Brown knows Tawana, then Pastor Brown going to listen to me what I got to say. 
But if she didn't know me, she'd be like, baby, I ain't got time to talk to you. No, no, you know, go on. But because she knows Tawana, then she going to tolerate me a little bit. Maybe, no, before she tell me, baby, I ain't got time. <laughs> you know, that, that's called a warm market. Uh, you see, what, what the warm market does is get you in the door. That's good. It gets you a conversation. It doesn't close the deal. Right, right. It just gets you a it, it makes the person listen. That's good. That's good. That wouldn't listen to you otherwise. Mm -hmm. Right? Now you're in the warm market. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You appreciate the warm market because I said buy Kendra's potatoes, then people buy Kendra's mm -hmm. potatoes because, oh, because they know I ate it. <laughs> And then they say, well, he ate it. He said it was good. I'm going to try it. That's right. You see, that's warm market. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build a kingdom through our warm market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is good. We're trying to build the kingdom through our warm market. Mm -hmm. and, and here is the problem with that. It's not God's design. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not God's design. God's design is not build the kingdom through warm market. Let me give you some witnesses. How many of Jesus' warm market was his disciples? Jesus, I'm here to start this great ministry. You know, I'm going to run down here and see John the Baptist and get baptized, and then I want y'all to be a part of my church. Who, who from his warm market was, was a part of his ministry team? Nobody. Nobody. His brother didn't even come along to after he was crucified. <laughs> that, so if Jesus was depending on his warm market to build his ministry team, he'd be discouraged. When he tried to go back to the hometown and talk to the people, he couldn't do no miracles there. Because yeah. when he got there, he said, you, uh, you that boy. You the carpenter's son, ain't you? I remember you. I remember you, little boy. Yeah, you, you doing all right, ain't you? Yeah, you, you got your little ministry now. Don't that hurt you when people say little? <laughs> yeah, I promise you, that made me speak in tongues. <laughs> I ain't praying. I ain't praying when I'm speaking in tongues. When they say that, I'm saying something under my breath. Amen. Oh, you got your little business, huh? That that's your little business now. No, it's my big business. But they, but they say they tell you they don't believe in your business. Right. Yep. Wow. They tell you when they say, "Oh, that's your little thing." Oh, that's nice, your little thing. Look at that boy. Look at that boy. He got a little thing now. That's nice. <laughs> boy, you keep it up. You go. You gonna be something after a while, boy. You hang in there. You know. Well, let me let me pray for you. Oh no, baby, I'm good. You don't have to. You don't have to pray for me. That's sweet. That's sweet. That they don't believe in you. They they know you. They changed your diapers. They know you lie. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they know your background. They know your history. Mm -hmm. They know your ways. They know your issues. They know the ones you ain't even been delivered from. Mm -hmm. So, so they they can't believe in the God in you because they're too busy believing in you and you. Mm -hmm. And so your warm market is blown. So what you have to be able to do, I've been pastoring, and I, and I love my mom. I do. I've been pastoring for almost 30 years. And in the almost 30 years that I've been pastoring, my mama didn't join my church. Mm -hmm. She never joined my church. She supports my church. Yeah. She loves me. Yeah. At least I believe it. <laughs> you know? But she didn't join my church. She didn't say, boy, I, I, I want him to be my pastor. <laughs> she didn't say that. She went and joined another church mm -hmm. and told me about it. <laughs> and I'm out here struggling, trying to get my little church on the ground. She said, you, 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 you stick said with it. Church. You stick with it. it. You said little church. My little church. It was my little church. <laughs> <laughs> it was showing up my little church. <laughs> I was trying to make it. She didn't know how many times I wanted to quit. No. Amen. And then she said, I'm going to go and join this other church. 
It's okay. Yeah, man. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's really okay. That's good. My though. point is, it wasn't my warm market. Yeah, that's good. It's if you, okay. If you look around the room, I don't have a lot of cousins in them. <laughs> yeah. In the room. Mm -hmm. it, it, th those are not the people that are driving my ministry forward, and that's okay. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean I have to fall out with them. I just have to understand right. that they're in my warm heart like and the kingdom is now built through your warm heart. Yes. Have you ever noticed that that some of the people that you're trying to witness to your your nephew and them, <laughs> and you've been trying to get them saved all this time, and then they go down the street yeah. and hear one little yeah. crooked leg preacher, and, and the crooked leg preacher say five things, and they say, Oh. <laughs> and they come and they tell you, I joined this church, I, I pay 20% a week, amen, I, you know, I, I go to Bible study, prayer meeting, everything like that. All of a sudden, why? Because it was in your warm market. So in sales, warm market is good because it gives you an invitation, but it's not the kingdom device. The kingdom device is to go and reach the nations. The kingdom device is to go and reach people outside of your circle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. It doesn't mean uh, ignore the people in your circle. Yeah. Love Amen. your circle. Reach outside your circle. Amen. Woo! And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were one, one mind and in one place and in one accord. Oh, boy, and then the Holy Ghost came. And then the Holy Ghost came and they went back home and told their family. <laughs> no. And there was devout men of every nation. That was there. And when they preached, they heard the word in their own tongue. Amen. And then those people were converted. And 3,000 was added to the church. And that happened because of people outside of their circle. So, are y'all with me? Yeah. Here's the big catch. A lot of times we're limiting ourselves because we're only fishing in our circle. Yeah. Wow. And we frustrate ourselves because we're trying to build a big business uh, or a big ministry in our circle. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the real key to your success is what's happening outside of your circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those people treat you like that because that's the relationship you have with them and you always have. Yeah. Along the way, they may support you and that will be great. But you need your three from outside the circle. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. When he got ready to go That's and build good. a church, Jesus That's sent good. out his disciples. He didn't say, now everybody go home and find your cousins and tell them to come join us. No, he didn't. He didn't. Mm -mm. I like that. He sent them out into the community. I like and that. they went out healing the sick and casting out devils and doing all of that in places they had never been. They got on a boat and, and sailed across the lake and went to the other side, and they started ministering to people there. Mm -hmm. And that's how they built, was by bringing new people in, and they became disciples, and they followed what was going on. Now, we have a condition, and our condition is we don't want to do that, because we don't want to do people like that. But while we don't want to do people like that, we're limiting ourselves yes. and failing our mission. Amen. We're limiting ourselves and we're failing our mission because God's design is for you to reach those people. Yeah. And they're waiting for you. Amen. You, you, you've been calling your cousin week after week after week. And it's somebody else that's been falling over you, asking. You know they want to, they want to need a word. You know they want to be in fellowship. You know they want, to, and you don't want to be bothered with them. Hmm. I'm preaching good. Yes, I'm, yes, amen. Yes, you, you don't want to be bothered with them, but you can't figure out why your daughter won't come. Right. And so you stressed out about your daughter. Let God deal with your daughter. Amen. Jesus tried to teach us the stuff. Uh, he, he tried to teach us, and, and when we hear it, it sounds crazy, so we say, Jesus, not feeling well. <laughs> I'm scared of you. I'm scared of you. <laughs> Go, Lord. This man came, and he said, I'm saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I don't know all 
all the commandments and I do everything that you're talking about with your disciples and I'm ready to be one of your disciples. And he said, sell all you have and follow me. And then he said, I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to get back to you. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. And then he went home and said, that preacher over there, he ain't right. Yeah, I, I told him I was holy and he started talking about getting rid of all my stuff. Another one came and said, I'm, I'm coming to your church. I'm coming to your church, but my, my family died. Yeah, yeah. My family died, and I got to go tend to them. And when I go tend to them, then I'm coming to your church. And then Jesus say harsh things. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he said, he say, let the, let the yeah, dead bury the dead. He going them. off on the dead people. He going off on the people burying the dead people. I mean, he calling them dead. The folks that buried is dead. Yeah, and, 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 and then when you go I love it. to bury them people, then he calling you dead. Yeah. <laughs> let the dead bury the dead yeah, and follow yeah. me. And then you go away. To go bury the dead because you did. Mm -hmm. okay. Jesus, Jesus recognized that, that everybody ain't going to follow you. Yeah. But why, why are you struggling over people that don't want to be what you want them to be? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. What are you, why, you, can't build, you can't build a church on people that don't want to follow you. So why are you why do you spend the majority of your time talking to people that don't want to follow you? Right. Amen. When there's people out there that want to follow you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Oh, yeah. I got one of my sons is in the hospital right now. I love him. I'm praying for him. And I hope he's watching now. But he's in the hospital right now. And and I can tell him, get up out that hospital and run through that brick wall over there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, he's gonna get up out of, and, and dare somebody to stop him. Yeah. And he's gonna run through that brick wall. Amen. And then now, now he might have to spend a little extra time in the hospital. <laughs> but but he's gonna do it. You know why? Because he follows me. We played he played football with me. When he played football with me, it didn't matter if he was hurt, tired, whatever it was. We gonna do it. Where, where are we going? Wherever you're going, that's where we're going. That's what we're going to do. Why would I waste my time with all of these other people that don't want to follow me when there's people like that that are dying to follow me? You know why you won't? Because you never get to them. You never get to them because you're wasting your time with the other people. They're, they're there. There's people that's willing to pay you what you deserve. There's people that's willing to support you just like you need. There's yeah. people that's willing to show up when you ask them to. They, they ain't tired. You, you ain't telling them to come too many times. Right. You just got to go out and reach those people. Right. And you're trying to reach in your back pocket and find them, and they're not there. Right. They're out there in the world. And, and, and let me share this with you. Oh. They're not all poor and homeless. That's Amen. good. Yeah. Say that. Well, we got we got to get out of our mind that we're going to build something over people that are destitute. Mm -hmm. It don't mean it don't mean that we don't care about the destitute people. But why you don't want rich people to go to heaven? Why why you don't want people that's got a right mind to go to heaven? Amen. Why you don't want people that's married to go to heaven? Teacher. Why you don't want people that's got good families to go to heaven? Teacher. You won't pass them so you can go to the corner and talk to the person that wants to be drunk. Make you feel they, 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 what they want to do right now is be drunk. Mm -hmm. You are bothering them. Mm -hmm. But it's somebody else over there that wants to be saved. Yeah, amen. But you ain't got time to talk to them because you're frustrated because you've been spending three hours talking to the drunk guy. Yeah. Jesus, See how the amens kind of taper back off? Yeah, they won't be good about themselves. We, we, we've got to go out and get the superstar. The, the, I, 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 this is hard for me because I'm not being political at all. Mm -hmm. But this is the truth. Amen. The truth is that Donald Trump is somebody God wants to see saved. Amen. That's the real deal. God, God yeah. wants to see Donald Trump in heaven. He, he, he wants to see him saved. Yes. Can you imagine, really, wow. if Donald Trump, Donald Trump got on TV and started speaking in tongues? You can't imagine. What would I mean, and for real, what what would happen if the, the, the impact 
that it would have the impact that he had because he put on a mask one time on people across the world. They said, oh, he's got on a mask. I guess it's all right for us to wear a mask now. Mm -hmm. Now imagine if he really had a conviction about Jesus Christ. My God. So imagine. So, good. so now, now here's the problem. We talking about him, mm -hmm. but we're not talking to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I challenge one person online or present mm -hmm. to show me the tweet that you sent to him encouraging him to be saved. I know y'all did, so send it to me. <laughs> we talked about him. He, he tripping, he messed up. Uh, he had uh, that, oh Lord, uh, but we ain't shared nothing. We ain't, we ain't sent one word with our prophetic self. There was the one preacher that got on there. I thought it was amazing. He yeah. was on CNN, and the yeah. preacher got on there, and he said, I want to pray for you. Yes. Uh -huh. And he prayed, and he went in, too. Mm -hmm. And he prayed for him. I was, like, happy and convicted. That's right. Oh, God. God. Yeah. And I was like, that's exactly what he was supposed to do. That's right. And not only did he do it, but the world got to see him do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a light. Uh, that's not hid under a bushel basket, but set up on, on the campus. Yeah. That's exactly what we're supposed to do. Like somebody not else. attack, right. but reach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't have to go to Trump because you're not able to get into that circle. But there's plenty of Trump-ish people mm -hmm. right. right around you exactly. that you ain't talking to. Exactly. There's plenty of Hillary-ish people. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of Obama-ish people. And we ain't reaching those people. Right. We're not even trying to. Right. We don't even engage them in that kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. See, when, when, when we recognize that uh, our, our mission is to reach our cold market, mm -hmm. then we have to be excellent prospectors. Mm -hmm. We got to be excellent. Kim, we got to be excellent okay. prospectors. You can, it doesn't matter how good you are talking to me. Mm -hmm. Is how good you are talking to them. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to be excellent in being able to reach people mm -hmm. that we only got a few moments to talk to because we don't know them. Right. That's the truth. And to capture their attention and give them a conviction that makes them say, I want to be saved. Mm -hmm. So, what's your 15 second elevator speech? What is it that you can say in 15 seconds that makes a person say, I want to hear more? What is it that you can say while you're standing in the grocery line that makes the person say, I want what you got? See, that's, that's being an excellent prospect. Amen. In the business, my, my, my line was, hey, do you know anybody looking for a part-time job or a career change if the money is right? Mm -hmm. Hey, do you know anybody <laughs> looking for a part-time job or a career change if the money is right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Do you know anybody? I mean, can anybody answer me? <laughs> you know anybody looking for a part-time job or a career change if the money is right? Yes, sir, I do. You do? Great. Uh, would you do me a favor? I'm looking for some good people for my friend. My friend is looking to hire some really good people, but he needs them real quick. Do you have a phone number or can we exchange numbers so I can get those referrals later from you? Sure. Great. Now I got your phone number and I got permission to call you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get I did that in 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. What are you doing in 15 seconds so that you can capture those people so that you can have a, so that you can have an ongoing conversation past this point so that you can share your mm -hmm. love and your and the word with them? Mm -hmm. Or are you missing them? Or are they gone? When when uh Philip met the man with the Ethiopian eunuch. When he met him with the with the uh, chariot was broke, the chariot was broke, and they didn't have AAA. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so it was gonna take a minute. Uh -huh. So when Philip came along, the eunuch was reading, and, and Philip, Philip elevator speech was, do you understand what you're reading? Right. Right. And the man said, how can I understand it? There ain't nobody here to teach yes. you. Well, I happen to be a teacher. 
One time I was at the Midas, and I and I and I just hit this woman with this. I, I mean, I, I, cause I just wanna, you know, I'm out of the box. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, get become a prospecting specialist. Yeah. Because if I can be an excellent prospector, then nobody can beat me building the kingdom. Amen. You see, Amen. so I was at the Midas. I was waiting on the oil change, and I pulled my Bible out and I started reading. And I was sitting socially distant from this other lady. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and she was like a chair over. And I said, excuse me. I said, have you ever read this chapter? Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and she said, what chapter is that? Mm -hmm. And I was at Mark chapter 5. Have you ever read that? And she said, uh, I probably read it sometime before. I said, oh, what are you reading now? <laughs> I, I don't know if she even got a Bible. Mm -hmm. But, but I'm, I'm, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get her a Bible conversation. Right. And she might say, I don't read the Bible. That's good. Now I'm close. And if she say, I'm reading Matthew, that's good. So now we can talk about Matthew. Right? And then you, now you're talking to me, so I got permission to ask you, are you saved? But see, I'm not going to ask you, are you saved? Because I'm a sales specialist, and I understand that as a salesperson, you never say, ask, ask, say no questions. So I'm not going to ask you a question. You can say come no on, to. Come on, come on. You know. So uh, are you, if I say, are you saved, you say no. Right. Or you can say yes. Right. But when I say, how long have you been saved? And where do you church? You love the Lord. Come you know? on. And what's your favorite? What's your favorite chapter in the Bible? See, I, I'm asking you questions that you can give me feedback. Right. And, if you don't, and if you don't have an answer, then I already know. You see what I mean? If you can't tell me how long you've been saved, or if you get the stammer and stuttering, you already have told me everything I need to know. So I can start closing. Because I'm out here to be a prospecting specialist. Why are we wasting opportunity after opportunity after opportunity like we got enough people? When we don't have enough people. We're desperate for new prospects. The, the kingdom is not overflowed with new saints. No, we 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 desperate for new recruits. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten our three in, in years. We still trying to get our three. Mm -hmm. Come on. I was talking about that the, the bountiful blessing circle thing. Y'all remember the, the folks give the money and then you give the money and then mm -hmm. you get the other people to give the money and then after that then you get some money back and you gotta get more people to give the money. Right. And you get that. You know what, what's beautiful about that is the key to success is you got to keep other people being successful. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you don't get other people to commit to being successful, you can't be successful. Mm -hmm. and, and, and whether that works or not for you is not the point. The point is that the only way you can be successful is to make sure other people get involved. Mm -hmm. You can't just sit back and say, I put my money in, I'm waiting. One day I'm going to be blessed. No, you got to get out there and get other people to be blessed. And when you get them looking to be blessed and teach them to get other people to be blessed, then you keep being blessed. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then the board freezes. Mm -hmm. I thought that was dynamic. <laughs> the board freezes, and there's no way for you to get your blessing mm -hmm. until you go out and get other people to get involved. Wow. Mm -hmm. And for some of us, our board has frozen. We, we there, we ready for the, to be blessed, but we haven't gotten anybody else being blessed, and so that's hindering us from enjoying the blessing that should be coming to us. A God is smart. He said, give and it shall be. Give and he, he didn't say, well, I'm just going to give you one day. No, no, no. He said, bring your tithes and stuff, and then I'll open the window. Yeah. Right. Give, right. give and it shall be given. Do unto others as you would have them. It's all predicated by you have to go do something. And if you're not doing the doing, then you're not going to reap what you reap, what you sow. You don't, you don't just reap. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't just get it. Right. You, you got to go out and do. Jesus said, I'm trying to get something done. And the harvest is ready to be reaped. But the laborers. What, what? If, if the harvest reap, then Jesus just give it to us. Right. No, no, no. I need somebody to go out and reap the harvest. Right. Right. And that means that you have to go out and actually do the working. Right. Right. Then when you do the working, then you get the increase. Right. Amen. Amen. 
But we're, but we're not enjoying the increase because we're distracted or we're discouraged. Mm -hmm. You can't afford. What, what, what distraction can you afford right now for where you are, the way your life's set up? What, what, what discouragement is okay? See, when you, when you realize what is keeping you from, when you realize what is what is preventing you from enjoying, can you really afford to be discouraged? Mm -hmm. There's some things. There's some things God is going to do in your ministry that you that even though you got a great history, your tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this Bible over there. <laughs> yo, yo, tomorrow. Your tomorrow is low battery. Your tomorrow is so much greater Amen. than your history. That's good. That's good. Oh, yes. and, and see, you 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 distracted oh, by how good you were. Well, living off of the history. You can be so distracted by how good you were that you miss what God is still getting ready to do. Amen. That's good. That's you you good. think, oh man, I used to be so, and I used to get this. Residue. We were saying, was that Sunday? We were talking about the in, uh, activating an inactive church. And, and then when somebody said, well, we activated because, you know, we did this, that. We did it. But it ain't done. What about the next doing? What about what's getting ready to happen next? What about the next wave? And see, there's a, there's a next wave of, of, of greatness yeah, that's so much greater than what you experienced. Yeah. The scriptures say that, that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond all that we could ask or even think of. Right. And then you're talking about what you remember. Mm -hmm. If he can do more than you can ask, he can surely do more than you remember. Yeah. That's good, boy. But you still, but you still stuck on your past. Stuck on that day. Yeah. yeah. You thought your bad experience was hindering you. Your good experience yeah. has slowed you down. Mm -hmm. Your last victory is slowing you down because you feel like you're great. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, Juanita, Juanita should have five more albums by now. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You see what I'm saying? The first one was great, but we should have five more by now. But I guarantee you, if she go back and, and she wants that up and testify, she can give you a list of distractions. Distractions. Mm -hmm. She can give you a list of discouragement. It didn't change what God had in store. It just delayed her from enjoying it. Yeah. And it. And it didn't stop you from enjoying what God has for you. At least you can sing what God has for me is for me. Right, right, right. If you can sing what God has for me is for me, then when are you going to get it? Yeah, come on. When, are you, when, are you, when do you want it? See, if you want it, then you go out, you gotta go out and get it now. True, true. I, I was watching, I watch CNN a lot, and on CNN they had a special coming up on Master P. I know y'all didn't believe that, but that on Master P they were talking about, and they and they had Master P on there, and they said, Well, how did you make your start? When you got started, he said we were selling tapes out the trunk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, we want to be great. We want to be Master P without doing Master P right, hustle. Right, right. Yeah. Master P didn't say all my cousins need to buy my CD. Right. Yeah. They, they went to the spot where everybody was and say, hey, check out this CD. Right. Check this out. Y'all play this. Play this in your car. Come on. Here, here, here one for free. Buy one. I mean, they was doing because what? I, my job is to get outside of my circle. Yeah. Amen. Master P ain't y'all cousin. But you know who Master P is, that's why you're shaking your head. Yeah, that's right. So he had to work outside of his circle so he could get into your circle. Mm -hmm. So that somebody else would tell you, you need Master P. Mm -hmm. uh. He bad. He be bad. You see what I'm trying to say? Now, now, now the preacher is going, uh. <laughs> now, because, because, because Master P broke out the circle. Right. And, and he even got to the same fire preacher. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Now, 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 how did he do it? Because he was selling out the trunk. Mm -hmm. What about you? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I mean, if you don't have your business, that's on you. But what about the kingdom? Mm -hmm. Right. 
Is your, is your hustle that strong? Is your game that strong that you determined to get people outside of your circle so that you can build an international audience? You can do that, but what's hindering you? You won't get out there and work out the trunk. And you got tools that Master P didn't have. What no Facebook? What no YouTube? All he had was cassette tape, dubbing. You know, and then came CDs. We fancy then. We got CDs. Mm -hmm. Bro Jokers was throwing CDs like playing cards. But he got out there and he hustled and he did his thing. What about us? We so anointed that we just wanted to reign. Right. We just want the manna to fall upon us. Right. That's not a miracle, that's lazy. Yeah, that is so good. Tell the truth. We, just, we just want, oh Lord, I just want you to just make it happen. Let it let it fall on me. If it fall on you, shout. That's it. You shout if it fall on you, right. but that's not your business plan. Mm -hmm. right. Your business plan should, shouldn't be, I'm just going to go outside and, and let it rain on me. Mm. Your business plan is I go out and I sow this and then God multiplies it. And then some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Right. So I get a supernatural increase on what I did. Amen. But if I did nothing, I get a supernatural Amen. increase on Team. my nothing. Team. Oh, nothing. Yep. And so I had one seed and I hid it because I was afraid. And I didn't know what to, and then the man came back and said, you should have at least tried to invest it right. and put it out there with the money chain and see if you can get some interest or something. And so he called them names. Yes, he did. Now you had my money all this time and you ain't done nothing, I call you names. <laughs> you know the talent, that was the talents, right? Yeah. They had a talent. Yeah. You know a talent is like a year's salary? <laughs> and you, you got a year's salary in your hand? It's invested. And what you gonna do with it? Nothing. Come on. How many years salary you had in your hand? Right, yeah. And where's the fruit? Yes, good. Where's the fruit of the years of what well, the talents that you had? In my tithes and in my giving and in my soul. That's the seeds. Now where's the fruit <laughs> of those things? See that that's what we got. If I, I I did a great presentation, I did a great offering, but but where's the fruit? Mm -hmm. Now I've got to go out there and, and stir something up. I planted real good. But where's the harvest? Amen. And we've got to become harvest focused. I'm, I got to stop. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's me. good. But, but we, we've got to become harvest focused. Amen. We can't. We can't continue to be satisfied with zero success. Amen. At the end of the day, you've got to actually sell something. Amen. At the end of the day, you've got to actually make it happen. You can't just say, well, I'm, I'm there. I mean, you can say that, but that ain't the goal. Mm -hmm. You got to actually, whatever it is, in this case, we're trying to get, we're trying to build the kingdom. We're trying to bring people to Christ. You got to actually be out there looking for that. Mm -hmm. You got to actually be out there pushing mm -hmm. to get souls on a daily basis. Amen. See, I knew my elevator speech, and I haven't been in, in that business for, Lord, Mm -hmm. Over 20 years. Mm -hmm. But I still know the speech because I know exactly what I wanted to say because I couldn't wait till that moment to get ready to think Amen. of something to say. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I practice it. I, I get in the mirror and practice it. I'll use it on you just to see what you say so that when I really get in the game, I'm ready to go. So, what are you working on right now? What is it that you determined to build? What is it that you determined to see grow? In, in your in your neighborhood, in your in your uh, community, on your job, what on in your school, what is it that you really want to see grow? And then we've got to put a ministry in place that has outcome attached to it, so we can actually see it happen. Amen. I, I, if it's not ministry, if it's your business, you got to have a plan in place that has outcome attached to it, so it really happens. You can, this girl, I'm giving her all this free advertisement. But she has some very good loaded potatoes you're going to have on Friday. 
Some, soon she's going to have some loaded potatoes. Uh, but, that, but they're very, very good. But see, if everybody doesn't know about it and everybody doesn't buy it, then it doesn't matter how good they are. They can be the best potatoes ever. But nobody knows and nobody enjoys it if nobody buys it and eats it. So what you have is wonderful. What you have is great. What you have is the best ever, but we don't know it until we eat it, until we buy it, until we make an investment in it. How, how long have you been saved? Have you forgotten what it was like when you first really came to Christ? Have you forgotten what it was like when you really got committed in your relationship with God? Do you remember looking at your hands and your hands looking at do you remember that first dance? Do you remember when you looked at the sky and it just seemed different? Do you remember that you slept better? Do you remember the peace that you had? Do you remember the burdens that were lifted? See, it was great. It, it was great, a, a, except for you've gotten so distracted and so discouraged that, that it's no longer top of mind for you. All the other things are on your mind and it's kept you from working in that area. And you know what brings it back to your mind? Is when you see another person yeah. go through what you went through. And when they get saved and they give their life to Christ, it's like you back in it with them all over again. It's like, oh, I remember that. I remember what it was like when I just woke up singing and, and, and went to sleep praying. And, and I just answered the phone, praise the Lord. I just love the Lord all day long. I just want to be in his presence. And all that. I remember that. Ooh, I long for those times. And then you start getting more people saved and more people saved because you're excited about it. Because it became a part of your daily focus. But if not, then you're distracted. And you weigh down and you burden down. Mm -hmm. No wonder you ain't talking about it. <laughs> no wonder that's not where you at. And the only thing that you can do to get yourself activated again is you got to get a new recruit. So we got to get out in the mission field. We got to get out there and find that person that's trying to find us and share the gospel with them that they're looking for. Let them come to God. Let them experience God in a way that they never could have imagined and see the supernatural happen in their life. There's new miracles that's going to be performed. There's new joy that they never would have imagined. Mm -hmm. And waiting on you to be God's instrument to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So we're so glad that you decided to join the team. Let's go out and get them. You can get three, or you can get 300, or you can get 3,000. Peter preached and got 3,000 in one sermon. Amen. I mean, how good of a preacher are you? All you got to do is get on the wall, amen, wait on the Lord to show up and, and begin to move in you again. Dare him no to perform in your life. Amen. And I guarantee you, he's ready yeah, and willing ready. to do greater than you could have imagined. I'm praying for you, and I pray that you continue to share this message, share this word, share this mission, yes. and we're going to build the kingdom of God together. Amen? Yes. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Amen.